Hi again, Ryan Miller here with Aetna Interactive, and this is part one of a two-part series. We're going to be taking a look at some predictions that I have for 2015 for online medical marketing, but perhaps more importantly, giving you some advice on what you can do to capitalize on those predictions ahead of the curve. Now, it's really five things we're going to focus on in this first of the two parts, and I would say today is mostly about search engine optimization. We'll look at other channels of online marketing in part two. But really, I think what we're, we're seeing here are five things. Number one, I think the free traffic that we've, uh, we've come to know and love, that that's going to become increasingly scarce in the new year. That uh, ranking reports, those tried and true reports that show how we rank for a specific word or phrase in any month, that unfortunately those are going to become increasingly unreliable. We're going to see that Google is going to continue the smackdowns, assigning penalties and punishments for people who are breaking their rules. That uh, sites where the content is kind of lackluster are going to be falling in rankings. And then as well that uh, Google's scrutiny of your backlink profiles, as well as something called negative SEO, uh, is going to be on the rise. So let's, let's just dive right in. Now, we have, over the last uh, number of years, we've really seen lots of free sources of traffic. We've seen free traffic from search engine rankings at Google. We've seen free traffic originally from Facebook, and I know back in uh, 2013, at the end of the year, they started charging for ads. On, on industry sites like RealSelf, you originally got a link for free, but now you have to pay. Uh, and uh, you know, all of these different sources are maturing to the place where they are figuring out how do we make money, and they're charging you for that placement. And uh, yeah, it's an uncomfortable truth, but it's one that you can easily adapt to. And our, our advice here is fairly simple. Develop lists. Focus on growing your fans and followers on sites like Facebook and your own email marketing list. And develop the capabilities of your staff. Because as online marketing as a whole becomes a little bit more expensive, you have to spend a little bit more to get that old exposure you used to get for free. A part of how you'll be able to manage that cost is by keeping some of those capabilities in your hands or in the hands of your team. Prediction number two, we're taking a look now um, at specifically ranking reports. Now we used to be able to cross that bridge and get to the other side with a clean analysis uh, where every step was supported by free and available data. Well, increasingly those, those boards, those planks are being pulled out from underneath us. Uh, so what, what exactly is happening here? Well, there's a thing called personalized search that in this new year is becoming more and more prominent. Each of us, when I search and when you search, we get different results. So a ranking report is, isn't really that useful anymore. Uh, we see that things like HTTPS, that's the, the secure version of the web, is rising in importance. It's becoming much more common. And when things are transacting, when people are, are um, visiting pages within that HTTPS, there's a little bit less data that's available to us. It's a little bit harder to track things like where people came from. Uh, with the advent of mobile devices, many of which uh, if we look back at last year and in 2013, simply weren't sharing data about their users and allowing us to easily track sessions. That kind of corrupted or has changed the reliability of our data. And as those things that were driving business decisions, um, you know, things like ranking reports, the, the, our, our personally uh, perceived measures of success, as they become less reliable, we have to look for different things to guide our decision making. And really our advice for, for practices here, the smart practices are moving past just talking about rankings. And they're focusing on traffic, specifically traffic coming from those big search engines from other sources. And then more importantly, the conversions, the actual moment where that visitor becomes a paying patient. So what's the third prediction that we have for the new year? I have to laugh a little bit here about that background image. Google continues the smackdowns. So what happened? In 2013, 2014, Google started enforcing their webmaster guidelines, their, their terms of use, if you will, more than ever before. Panda, if you'll hear, remember us talking about that. Al, actually, my colleague just talked about it last week in the retrospective looking back at 2014. Uh, Panda assigned some uh, diminishments in rankings for sites with poor uh, content, too little content, duplicate content, or too many ads. Uh, Penguin went after sites who were doing bad things in the name of building links. Uh, Pigeon, to a lesser extent, sort of changed the rules on, on how local search was working. So we see these big changes happening. And what do we need to do in the new year? Well, we simply need to be wary of shortcuts, right? We need to be skeptical that when something sounds like it's too good to be true, that it probably is. Maybe ask some more questions. Consult your trusted advisors. 
and get advice before you take action. So let's look at the fourth prediction for the new year. Uh, sites with lackluster content are going to fall. And it's, it's somewhat ironic and meant to be a little bit funny that I, I chose this now very famous uh, picture of Scarlett Johansson falling on the sidewalk. Um, very sorry about that, Scarlett. But uh, I'm talking about quality content here, a great user experience. And this particular photo really became uh, in this last uh, year, year and a half, this, this big content phenomenon. We saw people playing with content, having fun in new ways. There she is, she's banging the bongos. We see Scarlett Johansson oh, and that uh, posing alongside reaching for the llama in the Andes. I think maybe it was a play on the jacket she was wearing. There's super Scarlett there. Uh, Scarlett and the uh, running of the penguins and now it's actually Scarlett, not Google, that's gonna continue the smackdown in the new year. So all of the joking and the fun with content aside, the smart practices in the new year are really following a very simple mantra. Deliver the best pages in your market. And it's kind of simple when you think about it. What Google's looking for when someone performs a search for your services, your medical services in your market, is they're looking genuinely. They're hoping to find the best and most trusted sources of information in that market. And so you don't necessarily have to stand out or compete with the Wikipedias of the world or the WebMDs or the Mayo Clinic. You seem to be the best in your market, right? The final prediction in this set, in the first of the two parts, is that Google's link scrutiny, and specifically something called ne negative SEO, is really gonna be on the rise. And um, basically what happened is last year, actually the last two years, an algorithm update called Penguin came out, and it was Google's effort to try to automate the detection of, neg of sort of poor quality or low quality link building activities. Activities whose only purpose was to manipulate the search results. Well, uh, in doing so, they've now actively and for a long period had punished sites and lowered the ranking on sites that were engaging in these practices. Here's the problem. Now you can engage on those practices on behalf of a competitor and that competitor could be harmed. They could see their rankings fall or someone could do that to you. We don't wanna see that happen. Now for our clients, we just wanna let you know, as a part of our marketing activities, we've worked into everybody's plan at least twice a year now we'll be checking backlink profiles. So our smart practice here, police those backlinks. But I think really the big idea here is that you and your practice do need to orient yourselves to start thinking about where are those great, those authentic link building opportunities. What am I talking about? Well, it, the idea here is simple. The, the things that used to work, you know, the easy links that we could gain on the web are no longer of value. And so what we're down to is the true, great, authentic, connective links that represent how you are valuable both offline and on. What might that look like? Well, maybe you donate to a charity and you're aware enough to say, you know what, charity, uh, and for this donation that I'm providing you with, would you list me on your, li uh, your sponsors and donors page of your own website and provide a link back? Right? Very, very simple easy thing to do. If you're a member of a community group or organization, you link there, you form real connections with bloggers or the media in your space, but you need to be tuned into that or you're just gonna forget. So the smart practices in the new year, not only are they, they watching their backlinks, they're watching for opportunities to form good quality backlinks uh, as a part of their day-to-day -day activities. So there we are just kind of you know summing up if you do wanna learn more. This is the first of the two parts. Hang in there in just a couple more weeks. We're gonna send you part two, looking at some of the other channels that you'll be marketing in the new year. You know that you can subscribe to our newsletter, follow us, our Facebook, of course, email me directly if you have comments or questions. That said, Happy New Year, and here's to planning for 2015.